of the questions I see the most in the Rocket League community is what do I do when I get matched up with a toxic teammate, or a ball chasing teammate, or a passive aggressive teammate, or a tilted teammate, or just plain bad teammate. Now this is mostly out of your control, right, who you're matched up with, but you do have several options when it comes to dealing with difficult teammates. Today we're going to go over several common scenarios you might face, with five principles to keep in mind especially right now heading into a soft rank reset when toxicity tends to peak. So the first scenario is a ball chasing or an unpredictable teammate. This is probably the most common complaint slash question slash comment I see. This is a teammate who tends to overstay their offensive rotation. They might follow up their own passes too much, like something that looks like a good cross and then they end up following it for a, for a shot. They want to do more solo plays uh, or they don't really share the ball or pass. I think we should all understand that sometimes it's easy to slip into that type of play style. So it might not be something that only your teammate's guilty of. It might be something you've done too. So first of all, try to understand that they're probably just trying to do everything they can to win the game. You know, they're not trying to make it difficult for you, but they're still causing some problems by not rotating back on defense or following up their own hits a little bit too much. So one of the first principles is you shouldn't actually try to correct it through chat, okay? So you shouldn't give them advice in the game. The reason you shouldn't do that is even if it's good advice, like, hey, maybe don't follow up your passes so much, there's almost no way to type that in a way that's gonna come off in a good way or in a way that they're gonna receive well. Unless they're like an exceptional person that really takes criticism well, almost nobody takes criticism well. Even the most self-aware people, it's really hard to take criticism, especially in the moment when they're trying to do everything they can. Because usually you have to type really fast because it's in between a play, and so you have to be short. And But being short makes you sound, frankly, pretty rude. So as much as you can, it's really important not to try to correct over chat. So what do you do instead? Well, you have to change the way you play with them. So if you see that they're following up their own passes a lot, and you see that they're trying to take like a two on one if you're playing doubles, then that means you really need to just not go after passes that you would normally go after, right? You really have to just resist and wait for either him to win it or the other team to win it, and then try to make a play on the ball uh, when it pops out. I've seen a lot of pros and players in the community that I really respect give this advice, so it definitely belongs in this video. When you have a ball chasing teammate, the really the best thing you can do is try to play defensively and try to really anchor the defense, let them play offense, and then try to get a breakaway, especially in doubles. Breakaways can happen quite a bit. In fact, a good thing to try when you're playing defensively is actually bait in the other team a little bit, like delay your clears a little bit. You have to be pretty confident in your ability to clear to do that, but just to hesitate a little bit, get them creeping up a little bit and then clearing, can help you get a breakaway and, and run that kind of offense, especially if your teammate is a ball chasing teammate, then as soon as you clear, he'll probably be on it. So, uh, you know, just expect that and try to play more defensively. So let's go to the second scenario, which is a passive aggressive teammate. The number one chat of a passive aggressive teammate is the old okay, right? You just make a little mistake, boom. This can be really frustrating. In fact, I'd rather have a player just chew me out than be passive aggressive like that. It's really frustrating. So if you're trying to really be a good person, it might be tempting to apologize. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with a simple my bad. In fact, that's probably pretty good. But you don't want to over apologize because they're really trying to put all the blame on you. And sure, you might have made the mistake, but sometimes it's their mistake that sets you up for that mistake, you know? So don't apologize. Try to keep your head up because mistakes are going to happen all the time in Rocket League. And if you end up apologizing for every mistake, you're going to start focusing on your mistakes too much. Also, don't try to defend yourself. In other words, <laughs> just be quiet, <laughs> which you'll find is a theme with dealing with difficult teammates. But especially with a passive aggressive teammate, you don't want to defend yourself, especially if you actually did make a mistake. Um, you don't want to say, well, it was your mistake that led to this, because as we'll talk about later, starting a conversation is one of the worst things you can do with a difficult teammate. So let's go to the third scenario, which is a tilted teammate. This is someone that might not be outwardly mean to you, but they're tilted. Like you can tell they're not playing well, they're angry. However that manifests. The best thing you can do about this when you detect that a teammate is not happy with their own play is just some light encouragement. So don't, you know, don't type up a huge paragraph just like, we got this or something like that. I found to be really helpful. Uh, sometimes when I'm tilted and my teammate goes, we got this, like that, I respond well to that. Um, and if they respond, don't say anything. Like don't, you know, if you say, we got this, and then they say, no, oh, I'm playing so bad. Like, no, we don't have this. We have, there's literally zero hope. 
don't be like, well, technically there is hope. Like we, I've been, just no, don't respond. Just say it, you know, just the fact that you made an effort and said, we got this, that's enough. Because they're tilted, you can expect them to miss a little bit because they're probably not playing well. So don't expect them to make some amazing plays, but not too much, okay? Don't expect them to miss everything to the point where you're just trailing them. That will obviously make it way worse. Don't forfeit good positioning because you expect them to miss, but at the same time, don't be surprised when they're not playing, uh, you know, as good as they should. You have to, you have to take it upon yourself to lead the team with positivity, which is obviously really tough, but uh, it's something you have to do when you're in this situation. The, all these situations are not the ideal situation. You're just trying to do the best thing you can when you get a difficult teammate. So let's go to the fourth scenario, possibly the worst and probably the most common too, which is a toxic teammate. The most obvious display of toxicity is when they're really typing a lot, right? And it's really detailed. They probably were tilted, they probably weren't playing well, and now they're taking it out on you or the other team. The worst type of toxic teammates are the ones that are, you know, toxic toward their own team, which in this case is you. Like the first principle we talked about, you gotta keep your hands off the keyboard. If you respond, it's always gonna make it worse. Once I was playing doubles and my opponent was being really toxic to his teammate. So in my mind, as, as his opponent, I was like, this is great. They're gonna, you know, they're starting to fight. We got this game, it's gonna be easy because they're gonna start, you know, typing back and forth. They're not gonna be playing, they're not gonna be focusing. But his teammate was really smart about it. He didn't respond at all. That's all it took. He just kept his hands off the keyboard and focused on playing the game. And they ended up winning the game. Um, I expected them to fall apart, so I kind of relaxed a little bit. I was like, oh, good. But the key was that the other opponent didn't respond and just focus on the game. So again, can't say this enough, the best thing you can do is not respond. Now, obviously there's some cases where even if you don't respond, they're already throwing, like it's over. And if that's the case, then again, you talking isn't gonna do anything either. Really, the best case scenario you can hope for is that you don't respond, you keep playing well, they see the game turning around and they have a change of heart, you know, it's possible. So to recap those five principles for those four scenarios, number one, don't try to help out your teammate over chat because it usually won't come off well. Number two is try to play defensively and anticipate your teammates' mistakes, but not too much that it pulls you out of position. Number three is don't over-apologize. Of course, owning your mistakes is, is great, but try to keep your confidence up, and at the same time, don't make too many excuses. Number four, some light encouragement is really good if you can tell your teammate is upset. And number five is don't ever respond to negativity. One of my favorite sayings is never argue with an idiot, because from a distance, people can't tell which one is the idiot. So when it comes to really toxic people, the best thing you can do is always not engage. And that's really the best thing you can do. And this is some advice that I've seen from pros, uh, middle ranks, low ranks, pretty much applies to everyone because this kind of stuff happens across the board. This is the best way to deal with that. So good luck as we transition into a new competitive season and uh, try to stay positive. Later guys.